Welcome to Beside the Burn for Wednesday the 16th of November and all this week we are in Revelation chapter 7 looking at salvation and how salvation comes from God and how salvation has been purchased for us by the Lamb and we're finding out some wonderful things about our salvation. Uh, Yesterday we were thinking about the great number the precise number that God has called and sealed onto himself through the blood of Jesus Christ. And today, that great multitude of those who have been sealed and those who have come to faith is still before us. But it's almost as though John moves round and looks at the multitude from a different position. And this time, as he looks at the great multitude who have been sealed and saved, it's as if he sees it in a different context. And this time, he's not able to number the people who are before him. It's impossible to count them all. And so having just given us a precise number, now he's left wondering just how many there will be. So we're going to read verses 9 and 10 today. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count. So here's that difference from the previous couple of verses. This time, no one can count, but there is still a great multitude. And so John is looking in a different way, seeing the same group of people, but coming to a slightly different conclusion. And this time, instead of it just being the 12 tribes that have been listed with 12,000 coming from each, John's view is expanded. It's as if, as he has moved round and looks at the crowd again, he realises that they're not just from the 12 tribes, but they are now from every nation, every tribe, every people and language. So this crowd who are sealed by the blood of the Lamb are from right throughout history and over all nations. And they are standing before the throne and before the Lamb. This is a privileged position to be in. That whenever we have trusted in Jesus Christ and we have been sealed for salvation, then we come right into Christ's presence. We stand before him, we stand before the throne, and there we are able to worship God in his presence. We're given a wonderful description of these people. And again, this helps us to understand our salvation. They were wearing white robes and they were holding palm branches in their hands. Now, we've realised before that the white robes are the special clothing that we put on in preparation for the marriage supper of the Lamb. Whenever we will meet our bridegroom, Jesus Christ, and we will be dressed in white. And the significance of that whiteness is that we are sinful human beings, but our sin is taken away by Jesus Christ and replaced by his righteousness. It's not as though we can scrub up our lives and make ourselves as white as snow. It is only Jesus who can do that. And so he provides us with these white clothes and therefore we are forgiven. Our guilt and shame is taken away and we have this opportunity to live with Christ and to worship him. We also see that the people have palm branches in their hands and we think back whenever we hear that word palm, it immediately draws us to Palm Sunday that Sunday before Jesus' death on the cross, whenever he entered into the city of Jerusalem, he rode on the back of a donkey, but the people came and they carried palm branches and they laid them on the road before Jesus so that as he travelled in, that he would have this carpet before him and they put down their coats and they put down the palm branches. And here these people are carrying the palm branches as a sense of saying, 
Jesus, you are king. You are our king and we want to worship you. And these people who are doing all of this, those who have been sealed and those who have been called to salvation, they cried out in a loud voice. What did they cry? They cried out, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. They're looking at this scene in heaven and God is seated on the throne at the centre and the 24 elders are seated around him and the four living creatures are flying about. And also the lamb is there, the lamb, the one who took the scroll and is opening up the seals of the scroll. All of this is pointing to our salvation. But it's interesting here what they say. They say salvation belongs to our God. They realise that salvation does not belong to them. And we need to realise that in our lives, that salvation does not belong to us. It belongs to our God. He is the one who brings salvation. He is the one who gives the free gift of salvation. And so salvation ultimately belongs to him and can only be received through him. So today, as we read God's word, let's once again give thanks that we are part of many who have trusted in Jesus Christ down through the years that we are not on our own as followers of Jesus and that we have been given salvation and that salvation comes from the Lord God Almighty who clothes us in white and as we proclaim him to be our king and lay the palm branches down before him, we receive the salvation that he alone can bring. So do not treat your salvation lightly. Do not take it for granted. This is one, this is the most incredible gift that we can ever be given and will transform us completely. So let's bow together in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our salvation. We thank you for the forgiveness of sins that we have through Jesus Christ. And we pray, Lord, that you would help us to realize that this salvation can only come from you and comes from you alone. Help us day by day, Lord, to live in the light of your salvation, to worship you and to honor you, and to bring all of our sin to you, that you might forgive us and make us ready for your service. For Lord, we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.